The Model Shop Live Scale Modeling Show is brought to you by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. Well, hello out there to all of our model building friends. Boyd and JD with you again from our shop here in San Antonio, Texas. We're busy working on some models tonight. This is uh, episode 85, and we've been uh, busy in the shop here all week working on uh, mostly our client builds, getting caught up with a lot of stuff. I just wanted to share with everybody that uh, I'm really happy with uh, JD and his progress. He's doing great. He's learning a lot, and uh, he's really good with his hands and everything. How are you liking it so far? So far, it's been great, Boyd. I uh, appreciate you taking the time and to teach me some of these tips and tricks on the modeling business uh been having a lot of fun been working on a lot of led lighting uh, learning how to work with certain tools that i've never worked with before but it's been it's been great so far and i appreciate it awesome yeah we're having a great time we get along really well together and uh jd's a got a great work ethic and he's uh he's just really good with his hands he's picking this up really fast so we're making a lot of progress uh tonight on our show we're going to be sharing uh we i actually did a little bit of work starting on the uh uh, 153 scale Williams Brothers Lockheed Electra build. We're going to show you the uh, start to that. Some uh, uh, basic uh, parts preparation and some uh, kind of pre-assembly work and then uh, we built the wings a little bit uh, for some of you new modelers out there who are uh, maybe attempting your first model kit. Some uh, You can follow along with uh, some of that and, and see what it takes to uh, uh, some of the basic tools and supplies you need to get started when you build your first model. And uh, uh, some guidelines that you can use that will help you with building all your models in the future. And then we're going to come back after that and uh, be mostly on the bench tonight. And uh, we're going to show you some of the progress we're making. I've got a uh, little bit of tips to share with you guys, those of you out there who want to build the uh, 1350 scale classic enterprise kit by Polar Lights. Uh, show you some tips and tricks for putting together the shuttle bay and getting that lit properly. That's kind of one of the trickiest parts of that entire model to work on because you have... Uh, really limited space on the inside of the model and getting the uh, all the windows inside the shuttle bay lit up if you decide you want to light it and then on the outside of the ship we have the windows towards the tail that uh, since the shuttle bay fits in there you know really tight there's a couple little tricks that you have to do to get all that worked out and I'll show you the, uh, some of the methods, methods that we use here to make that work and then uh, just kind of going over uh, we're going to have uh, JD talk to you guys a little bit about what he's learning and what he's working on a little bit going along with this whole process so, uh, and a little bit of modeling news from uh, what's going around uh, with some of the modeling kit manufacturers and things like that we'll have for you in a little bit coming down the road. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we'll start off with on the bench working on the Williams Brothers Lockheed Electra. Be right back, everybody.
Okay, everybody. Well, we're working on the uh, 153rd scale Williams Brothers Lockheed 10 Electra. We're going to build this up as Amelia Earhart's airplane. And I just wanted to uh, show you what we're getting started with on the build here. Uh, just remove these uh, parts for the wing assembly from the sprues. And I'm going through right now and just kind of cleaning up all these edges. I've been working on this a little bit. I've got my uh, 180 grit sandpaper here. And I'm just going around these edges and scuffing off the burrs and cleaning up the edges just a little bit to make sure we got a nice uh, clean surface to start with. You can see we've got our little uh, spots from the uh, sprues, you know, that are uh, still left over on there. We want to remove those. And uh, they have you uh, starting off on the fuselage on this first, but I decided to do the wings first because I've got to do some uh, painting on the inside of the uh, cockpit before we uh, before we put together the two halves of the fuselage. So we're going to go ahead and get this wing assembly done first. And this 180 grit sandpaper cleans up these parts really fast. Takes these burrs down. We're going to be doing a little bit of putty work on the edges of this once we get it all uh, put together so we don't have to uh, have these nice and clean just yet. They're going to be a little bit rough with the 180 grit, but we'll sand those with some finer paper when we put our putty on there and get those smoothed out really nice. But this 180 grit takes down the burrs really fast, almost instantly. That's why I like to use it. You can see these are cleaning up really fast. And then I'll just go around on the on the area here that's going to take the glue and just scuff that up a little bit too. That helps the glue bond to it really good. And uh, we have make sure we have a you know kind of a nice flat surface there to work with. This isn't a very big model, but it should be pretty nice when it's all done. A nice little desktop display. You don't have a lot of space for your models and all that, so that'll work out pretty good. And like I said, just scuffing this up just a little bit. Got nice flat contact areas inside here to glue to, so we got plenty of surface area for our glue to make a nice bond on these parts, which is cool. We'll do the same thing on the inside of this part. Okay, so you can see I've got everything prepped up and ready to go. We're not going to do much uh, sanding on the outside of this, uh, just a really light sand with, um, I'm going to use, I'll show you one of these, I'm going to use a Scotch-Brite pad to, uh, to do that. Uh, the reason why is we've got some really nice raised riveting detail on this and we don't want to sand that down and lose it. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of, of flash on it here and there, but this will remove that and it'll scuff it up just enough to where we'll have a nice bond where our primer will stick to it really good. Um, before I um, do my primer, I'm going to assemble these parts and I'm going to actually take them in and wash them. Normally I'd wash them before I started doing anything. I just forgot to at this point when we started filming. But uh, I'll go ahead and assemble these wings and everything and then I'll take it inside in my kitchen sink and uh, wash these with some Dawn dishwashing detergent and some warm water and that will remove the uh, molding release agent. There's a there's an oily film that can come on these and I can feel a little bit with my finger on these parts and you want to make sure you wash that off because uh, if you leave it on there your paint won't stick to it very well. We could have some issues with paint peeling up later on so uh, we're going to do that and then once it's all clean we'll scuff it really good with our Scotch-Brite pad all over and then we'll prime it and then we'll sand it with some 600 grit paper which is really really fine paper and that will uh, that won't take away any of our uh, you know, our nice riveting detail. We want to see that on the model, so. Okay, so we're ready to glue some parts together. Looking at the instructions here, it just has uh, the top and the bottom going together. You got your uh, uh, wing ends here first, and you got to kind of match them up. Make sure you're going on the right ends here. Ailerons match up with the ailerons on the top and the bottom. You could wind up putting that on the wrong side if you're not careful and have it backwards, but uh, you got to have these lined up. So this is the way this one goes, so I'm going to go ahead and glue it. Just using my regular uh, tester's red tube glue here, just putting a nice little bead down. We got this nice 
flat area here we can use for making sure we got plenty of glue on there. There are no, um, on this particular model, there are no what we call uh, locating pins, which is interesting. So I usually wind up cutting all those off anyway because most of the time they're not right and sometimes they don't allow the parts to go together all the way. You know, they won't bottom out in there. And uh, so I just go ahead and uh, do it like this anyway and just make sure everything's kind of, you know, fitting good and symmetrical and all that. As you can see, there's our wing and it, 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 it all lines up really good. The edges fit nice and clean and everything and it laid down there nice and flat. No warping or anything, so that's a nice mold. So we'll go ahead and repeat that on this other side now. we don't leak any over onto our outside surfaces there and then making sure our ailerons lined up again and we'll lay this one down and I'll make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers got a little bit squirting out around the edges and that's exactly what I want I want that to do that because that gives me a an indicator that I've made contact all the way around and that uh, the uh, we're gonna get a good bond okay so you can see this one here it fits really good too they both fit together really nice now what we want to do is before this dries too much I'm gonna just take my uh, 180 grit paper and I'm just lightly going around this edge again where the two halves meet and what you're doing here is you're creating some plastic dust by sanding it and that's going to bond with that glue that leaked out around the edges a little bit and that's going to make like a nice uh, we're almost making glue you know pl glue and plastic cement which is going to make uh, help seal it up and it's going to help it stick together and uh, if you do this right sometimes you won't even have to use any putty afterwards uh, and we'll see what this looks like in the end after we it'll it'll reveal itself really clear when we prime it the primer will show you any uh, flaws you have kind of hard to see when it's just the raw plastic here but this little step right here gives you a nice uh, clean edge and it uh, makes that bond really really strong there the you know the, the sanded plastic actually gets in there and mixes with the glue and makes a nice joint okay do that on both pieces here and you want to do this you know before the glue sets up the whole point of it is to uh, you know make it mix in with that glue while it's still active and it'll just kind of bond together Okay, so those parts are looking pretty good. Now we got our center section here. We want to make sure, look at our instructions here and, and see how they have you doing that. Uh, so you just want to make sure that the two halves of the nacelles are going to line up. Engine nacelles, top and bottom. And everything fits great, guys, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this glued down as well. We're going to put a little bit of glue on this inner edge here. You can see that they've got this where the, the, the wing halves or the wing extensions kind of butt together. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bead on the top part of that. I don't want it to uh, leak out too much and get on my uh, surface of my wing, though, so I'm going to be careful with that. Same thing on both sides. that down in there then we're just going to go around this little seam here on both sides OK, 
Okay. Do this one first. Just checking the taper on the wing there to make sure it's the same on both sides. Okay, and that fit together real good, guys. I'm really impressed with these molds. I mean, they're, they're fitting together really nice. Make sure we get that up nice and tight. Okay, so now we've got this kind of all braced together here. What we want to do next is we're going to uh, get a little bit of tape. I, I like to use this uh, painter's, painter's tape here because it doesn't leave any residue behind when you pull it free. And we're going to cover this little seam right here to make sure that these two edges don't separate on the bottom. Okay. And then up on the top edge here, you've got our little seam where it went together right next to the engine nacelle. That could spread on you, so you want to keep a little bit of pressure on that. We're just going to wrap it around it and just you know keep a little bit of tension on that tape, and that will keep those two pieces together for us. And we'll do the same thing on the back edge here. Okay, and you can see our glue's already starting to dry. Just kind of clean it a little bit squeezed out on that wing tip there. I'm just getting rid of that. And we'll finish sand this with some uh, some finer paper and uh, get it all nice and smooth when we prime it and everything. And we'll see if we have to do any putty work there or not. Doesn't look like it. I mean, it's it's fitting together really really good already. Okay. So there you go, guys. There's the uh, there's a wing wing assembly for the model, and this will give you kind of an idea about the wingspan size of the kit, you know, compared to my hand. It's not too bad. Uh, you know, it was kind of a small plane in reality, so that's probably why they're having such a hard time finding it. They've been looking for it for years. But uh, we're off to a good start on our Amelia Earhart airplane, so there's a little segment for you tonight on our basic uh, preparation, getting things going on the start of building a model, and it's kind of the same thing that I do on a, almost every model that I build. So uh, some of you new people out there, hope those little tips will help you out. Just a couple basic things you can gather up here to uh, help get you off to a good start. Okay, everybody, we're going to call this one a wrap and be back for our next segment. Hang tight, grab yourself some popcorn, and we'll be right back.
Okay, everybody. Well, we're back on the bench with you now, and uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple little tips that we have here. Uh, JD and I have been doing a lot of work on these uh, 1350 scale TOS Enterprise builds, getting all caught up on those. And so we've been knee deep in enterprises here for the last couple days, actually, the last week and a half, two weeks. And uh, some of you guys out there have written in a lot and asked questions about, you know, how we do some of the lighting on these. And uh, so we thought we'd uh, share a little bit of that with you tonight. The, uh, one, of the, one of the areas that's a little bit tricky to light on this particular model is the uh, shuttle bay area. And you've probably read about it on forums and you've probably seen it in some of the posts that people have made. But uh, the model has a little bit of a design flaw in the fact that the uh, shuttle bay actually, once you assemble it here, it fits really tightly in the back of the model and it doesn't leave much room uh, to get any uh, additional lighting to light the shuttle bay itself, the windows that need to be lit, and the ceiling. And um, looking at the model itself here, the hull, uh, you have these walls in here that the uh, shuttle bay, when, when, once it's installed, it basically sits up against here completely flush where there's no gap in between the walls. So uh, to try to get lighting uh, in these windows here in the back is really, really difficult. There's no room to put like regular LED strip lighting in there. Um, you know, so there's a couple little things you can do here, which I figured out over time uh, since I've built you know, several of these now. And what we're using here is we're using these really nice little uh, 0805 SMDs or surface mounted diodes. You guys hear me talking about these all the time. But uh, again, some of you out there that are new to the hobby, you can pick these up. Uh, these are, uh, we get all these from our good friend Jerry at HDA Model Works. That's www.hdamodelworks.com. And um, I'll show you guys, uh, some of you that haven't seen these before, what these look like. They come in a little package like this. Uh, we get five in a pack here that I get from Jerry. Now these are available in all different colors and shades. And uh, so we have a little bit of a mixture here on what we're doing with the lighting on si inside the shuttle bay. But being that these are so tiny, they're barely bigger than the head of a pin as far as the actual area that lights, if you can see that there. They're pre-wired. They have their own resistor built in. Uh, the resistor here, I'm not sure exactly what the value of that resistor is. But the lighting is just about right from anywhere between 9 volts to 12 volts DC. So they're pre-wired with the correct resistor if you're going to operate around those voltages, which I'm pretty much all the time running my lit models at 9 volts. So what I'm using here is I'm using a combination of what we call white, standard white, and warm white. Now, as we know, the, the 1960s uh, version of the Enterprise... Uh, they had so, sort of a, more of a yellowish looking lighting going on with the windows and some of the other things, you know. In the 60s, uh, LEDs weren't invented yet, and so they were using incandescent bulbs uh, inside the model, and that's why you notice, you know, the, on the original series before you saw the, uh, you know, the remastered CGI version of the ship, whenever you'd see it on there, the windows looked, uh, you know, sort of like a yellowish kind of glow coming out of there. And so we want to replicate that and give it that original classic look. Well, in order to do that, we're using these, what they call warm white uh, SMDs, which are uh, gonna give you that sort of a yellowish kind of glow to them. Not super yellow, but you know, not like fluorescent white looking that you see on, uh, say, the Enterprise Refit, where those were more updated, more modern, and they looked more like a fluorescent lighting going on on the interior of the ship. And so, uh, we're using a combination of uh, the warm whites for all, for all of our window lighting, and we're using the standard white, which are more of a fluorescent looking light, to light the, uh, up here on the top where we're lighting the ceiling panel. So we want like bright light, you know, down inside the shuttle bay uh, that you would normally see in a big lit up area like that. So what I've done here is I've, uh, I've used uh, several different uh, locations here. I've got two SMDs located on each side of the shuttle bay here. You can see that I took my little Dremel tool and I grinded just a little recessed trench area here on the side wall uh, on both sides of the shuttle bay here and that's located where you see the uh, the windows on the sides on the interior here there's sort of two sets of windows on each side uh, near these little kind of control booths that are inside the uh, shuttle bay there and so we're lighting those in the, with our warm white lighting like, like you saw on the television show kind of a, a dim you know warm white look and then at the, va the back here, the far wall, we have the same thing. We have a row of like four windows that goes across uh, with some kind of little round uh, detail there. You, you'll overlay your uh, photo etch parts on the top of this. You basically paint these, light block these parts. Uh, this is just the standard opaque plastic that comes with the kit. 
uh, not the clear parts and I just you know I wanted to show you that because it's really actually really easy to light this shuttle bay you don't need to go out and get the clear parts and in fact I think this actually looks better than the clear because it it has a sort of a being that it's opaque plastic like it is it sort of has its own built-in light diffusion you know so you don't get that real bright glare of the uh, the lights coming through it that you'd have to you know tone it down somehow if you wanted it to look right so uh, we've grinded our little trenches here on the sides we've got our warm whites here also on the back wall here we've got two more of these 0805 SMDs in warm white that lights the uh, the four windows here on the back wall and the little kind of round detail lighting that's just below those and that's taking care of that well up on the ceiling here like I said we wanted to have really nice bright uh, lighting coming through so uh, being this is an opaque part like I said a solid pla uh, piece of plastic I took my uh, Dremel tool with my uh, with my sanding wheel on it here and I'll show you what that looks like and I just basically took this part and I grinded it down and made it you know fairly thin uh, not paper thin but you know much thinner than it originally was if you look at this part when it comes out of the kit uh, you'll see that uh, there's a sort of a ridge or an open like trench here in the center and just to give you an idea how far to grind this down I grinded it down until it was even and that trench was uh, gone and we had just a uh, you know uh, uh, kind of a you know universal flat surface here on the top and then going from there I just simply glued down three of these standard white SMDs you know spaced them apart equally one two three and uh, what that does now is that shines our light down on here now if you look at this uh, just you know sitting out here by itself uh, it'll appear like there's uh, three individual you know points of light in here and you really want this to look like it's lit all the way across and you know, evenly uh, the problem is, is, is this sits inside the uh, the model itself. You know, the hull. There is like virtually no room between the ceiling and this part here. Now you're going to give yourself a little bit more room by grinding this top down like that. But what happens is, is when you put this inside the model, I've got this um, this inner area here, which is the roof of the shuttle bay, or you know, above the shuttle bay. That's all been painted in white, as you can see. Uh, what happens is, once this gets in there and it's fitting so close, the the light reflects from my SMDs back and forth off of this and onto the roof and once that uh, that uh, shuttle bay is in there the roof then will lit will be lit all you know the lighting will spread out it you won't see those individual uh, hot spots in there anymore it will all you know the light will bounce around and reflect and being it squeezed in there so tight it will light up and look like one solid uh, you know lighting panel on the top like it should and uh, so that's a little trick you can use for uh, you know making that work now here uh, also the I've taken my uh, I've got this air powered uh, grinding tool here that has this little kind of acorn shaped grinding tip on there and so my little trick is is before I start working on this I take this on the inside of this model and I lightly grind away some of the inner material here now this plastic on this particular model is really really thick so you got a lot to work with you can shave quite a bit of that away uh, on the inside and not weaken the model at all it's still gonna be plenty strong we're only going forward about maybe this far uh, so you're not weakening the area here where the pylons are or anything like that it's still plenty strong you don't have to worry about any of that uh, but that gives us a little bit of squeeze room in there to get some lighting in here now if I get this close enough here for you you can see that what I've also done is I've taken uh, some of these warm white SMDs and I've glued these in in strategic points here and what I've got is they're laying on their sides they're not facing this way and they're not facing you know inward they're laid on their sides I just put put a little drop of uh, <coughs> CA glue on there and lock them in place so they're angled up upward and uh, right below these two little window groups here and then right below these two little rectangular uh, window groupings here and that's gonna provide my exterior lighting here and give me my lighting in this area in the back which is uh, you'll see a lot of these builds out there where that back area is not lit because they couldn't figure out how to get any you know lighting back in there it's just it just fits so tight so that's how we were able to achieve that and it works really really good so you've got uh, your inner lighting going on with our SMDs hooked up to you know actually mounted onto the walls of the shuttle bay that like this now those are facing directly down pointing straight at the plastic so they're you know they're right up against it and they're shining maximum light to the inside and being that this is uh, opaque like it is the diffusion that you get coming through it looks just right they don't look too hot or too bright on the inside so that works out really good now you can see what you wind up with here is you got uh, you know your leads coming off which is all your positive and negatives coming off of your uh, SMDs so I just bundle these all together 
and get them into a kind of a wiring harness here. And as we uh, go to place it inside the model, and when we get ready to mount it, we've got a kind of a modular thing going on here. And then we just, uh, you know, kind of tuck all this in, get it all, you know, nice and tidied up and neat. And then we just solder it into one of our power junctions here where we've got, you know, 9 volt power running through that's lighting our, uh, our strip lighting here so that when we activate the power, all the lighting will come on at the same time. We get the lighting inside the shuttle bay, we get the exterior lighting, and we're lighting these windows here on the outside. So that works really good. Now, for the, there's also a small little uh, light that's at the rear here, just above the shuttle bay doors, and there's a separate little uh, piece, and I'll grab that for you really quick, which uh, needs to get mounted uh, above the uh, shuttle bay doors. You know, you see that little, it's, a, it's sort of a rectangular shaped, uh, uh, sort of a floodlight if you want to call it that. I don't know if it's to help guide the shuttles in and out or whatever that it was there for to mark the back of the ship so they could see it from far away. But it sits basically right underneath of the, uh, the dome that's also on the very back of the, of the ship here, which is on the original was done in sort of a dimly lit green. So you can serve two purposes here. You can, um, uh, what we've done here is we've mounted another one of our 0805 SMDs in there. Now what I've done is I've butted that right up against the, uh, the back side of our part here so that this little uh, window, or if you want to call it a window, it's you know this little rectangle shape right up in here. It's going to light that really bright coming through this opaque plastic. And I used the standard white. The exterior lighting on this was not supposed to be in a... Uh, warm white it's supposed to look more like a uh, you know a bright like fluorescent white so I used a standard uh, 0805 regular white and I've got that glued in there now what I did is I masked off the little window there with a little piece of uh, Tamiya masking tape and I painted this whole outside of this thing with with black about two or three coats to light block it and then I came back and painted it the hull color and uh, so now this is ready to be mounted in there so what we'll do is when we get ready to um, put the uh, shuttle in we'll mount our shuttle in you know our shuttle bay in here like this and um, it's kind of working in here just temporarily not so I can show you this and we have our shuttle bay mounted in there well then we'll take our our shuttle doors grab those real quick which is this sort of half open you know kind of clamshell thing and uh, this is really important because this all needs to be done uh, before you put the model together, uh, before you put the two halves of the hull together. So you, you basically want to glue this on one side and get it kind of set up like that. Then this little piece here can wedge in here. It fits in here really tight. And that's the reason why you want to put this in before you, you, uh, you glue the two halves of the hull together. Otherwise, uh, if the two halves of the hull together and you put your shuttle bay doors in there and you try to wedge that up in there, it's really, really tough to get that in there. It, it doesn't want to fit at all. So we've got this where we can set this all up and get that in there, and then we can glue everything in place, and then we can go ahead and put the other half of the, the hull together around that. Okay. Then also on one side here, while you're at it, you're going to wind up with a light leak right around this area where the, the arch of the shuttle bay meets the interior walls of the, uh, the hull itself because you've got that side lighting. So what I do is I take a little bit of my... Um, putty you can either use this type or whatever you have with it that has a little small like applicator tip and just squeeze a little bead of that up in there and then come back and take your uh, q-tip or something and just wipe off the excess and the white will sort of match up with the you know the hull color in there you won't see it. you won't even have to get in there and paint it it'll just leave a bead on the inside there where that light leak was and since it's putty and it's thick uh, the light won't won't go through it you won't have to paint it or anything and that takes care of that light leak that you get that goes all the way around on this arch that you need to take care of and uh, you can only do that on one side, though, unfortunately, because, you know, the other side's not assembled. So what you have to do is when you get the, the other half of the hole put up in there, you got to kind of reach up in there on the other side and take care of that the same way. But so once this is up in here, now you have your lighting uh, at the back for the, um, the, you know, the lighting that's supposed to be above the door there, the, the doors. And you're also going to have a little bit of light coming up in your, uh, your little dome here, which you're, you know, lighting both of those things at the same time. So that's just something that I figured out over time. Uh, trying to do it the other way, it just it just winds up being a lot harder to do. And then here, finally, what I'm going to show you is that on each side here on the floor, just below, you can see that I've got... Uh, let me grab one more little piece here. 
I've got a standard white 0805 SMD mounted right here. And the same thing on the other side of the hull. That's been already tied into our main wiring harness here, so it's going to light up whenever the power is on. That's to light up our fan tail here. Uh, you know, we have these little approach lights that go underneath of the uh, open shuttle bay doors. And that's to light this up. Now, this is the opaque part. This is not the clear part that comes with the lighting kit. It can be lit the same way. You've just got to be, you've just got to uh, bring the uh, the SMDs up really close to the back side of this. So they're, you can see they're sitting right there on the edge. And then this gets mounted on over top. Once the two halves of the hull are glued together, this just slides right in and gets glued in place. Now, you can see I've got my, I painted over the uh, little light things here with some Tamiya transparent red, green, and yellow and they don't look that clean right now. Well, there's a photo etch part that overlays over the top of this. So you just put this in and get it glued, and then you uh, paint your photo etch part the hull color, and you overlay it over the top of this, and you get a perfectly uh, clean looking, beautiful, you know, light blocked uh, approach lights there at the back that have the really nice detail on there, and it'll all light up really nice and clean and look great. You'll have to come back at the end when you do your putty work and just clean up this little edge here on the bottom, and then you know, at the same time when you're doing the two halves of the hull. So that's how you uh, basically do that, and that's been working out really good. So I just thought I would share some of that with you. Um, the uh, rest of this is, uh, you know, pretty much straightforward. You've got your, your LED, standard LED strip lighting going on in here. You can see I've strategically mounted uh, the different strips in here to light up the entire hull. We've got that identical kind of a mirror image on the other side. They're uh, all wired together in these harnesses coming out the front so that when we glue this together, uh, we come back at the end, we pull our power wire and our trigger wire for our brassard motors and everything up through our tube, and we pull that wire through and then we bring it all out through the front. We terminate all our connections, you know, solder them all together, tuck them back inside the model, put the plug of the uh, deflector dish assembly in there, and we're all tidied up and all wired up and good to go, mounted on our base. So. Uh, that's how we do that and uh, one little other thing I'll show you in here is that I've got the clear window inserts in here on most of these that I build you see this little section right here if you look at the uh, the ship on the television series this this one little grouping of windows here was always blacked out it was never lit so that's how I build most of these uh, but sometimes the clients want to have you know the entire thing lit up I think it looks kind of good in black because it kind of breaks it up a little bit and doesn't look like you know too much lighting going on but uh, sometimes the client wants to have you know those lit as well but this one you can see we've done in black uh, even though they come in the smoke black uh, tinted parts with the kit they will leak a little bit of light so what I've done is on the back side dusted a little bit of black paint you know to black those out but here on the clear windows which we use the clear glass inserts I went back and dusted over those with some white uh, just the same color I used for the hull and just lightly dusted over those with the airbrush now the reason I do that is uh, to create some lighting diffusion. That way we won't see any bright glittery spots, you know, coming from our LEDs. If you happen to, you know, look at different angles inside the windows, you won't see any, you know, bright spots coming through and they'll still light really nice and bright. But also in case you, you know, had any wires or something that you might see in there, if the windows are perfectly clear, you get up really close and look in there, you, you might be able to see some wiring or something like that. So that, that kind of masks all that. So I've done that and, you know, in the entire model, anywhere that we have clear window inserts here, uh, in the neck, uh, all the window inserts that go in the uh, in the saucer, we've done the same thing. So, uh, but we're going to show you a little bit of the work uh, that we've done on the saucer here in a little bit because JD is going to come back and show you some of the things he's been working on with that. So, we're going to take a quick break here. JD is going to bring some stuff over here and he's going to talk a little bit to you guys about what he's been working on with some of this stuff. Okay, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with that.
Hello folks, uh, this is JD. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about uh, what I've been working on here at the shop. Uh, this is a saucer that I've been working on. We've already got a couple of these done. Um, basically we, what we have here is you've got your LED strips. Uh, what I did was have all the wires running all down the same direction. That way you don't want to have them backwards because it's going to be more difficult when you're connecting your wires later down the road. Uh, we've got each and every one soldered. If you look closely, every single one has been soldered. It's probably best to uh, solder as you go. Don't wait to, to finish everything and then go solder everything at the end. We, do, we like to do it one by one. That way you don't miss anything uh, down the road. Uh, you can see right here we've got our control board. We've got uh, our street wraps right here, heat street wraps. Uh, now we have it spray painted white here. That helps uh, bounce the light, reflect the light. But we've got a black coat underneath that. Um, if you've looked closely right here, we've got all of our uh, our, our little uh, LED lighting in there, which was uh, the white. The thing. SMDs? SMDs, yeah. white. Um, if you look up here in the front, we've also got a couple. We've, we've got the transistors. Uh, positive is always going to go to the transistor. That's that's a good way to know which end you're putting on there. Positive always is with the transistor. Um, I've also been working on a little bit of uh, using the Dremel tool. This tool right here, you can see it comes it comes very handy uh, these little rings right here once you clip them out they're gonna have loose ends on there I mean if you see them over here it's pretty sharp there you just use that tool and it drills them down then you're gonna get your 320 sandpaper and just sand it down and it makes it a lot easier to to work with uh, but yeah basically this is what I've been working on so far I'm learning a little at a time uh, Boyd's been showing me stuff here and there uh, uh, once you get once you finish and everything getting everything soldered you're gonna have a bunch of loose wires gathered up around and what you want to do is just get a little bit of glue and you can see right here you want to tuck them down and just keep it nice and flat because once you put it together it's a lot easier you don't want to have wires sticking out everywhere and it just helps you out so you want to keep them flat and nice and and you know just a little bit of glue right here and there to keep them down and uh, yeah and uh, basically what uh, JD's been working on a lot is he's uh, just learning the you know the basic things with his hands going in like he mentioned and uh, uh, I have him working on you know cleaning up a lot of parts you know taking the parts off of the sprues getting rid of the burrs getting parts prepped and sanded you know those little things that uh, make a difference on uh, how the model looks in the end you know you want to clean everything up really nice and get it all prepared then he's learning how to do some spraying he's he's learning how to like you talked about here you know we do our when we do our lighted models we're doing light blocking on these and for some of you people out there that again might be new to this when, when you're lighting a model you want to make sure that uh, you coat the inside surface with a uh, a light reflecting material like maybe black to start with now some people like to use silver I, t I like to use black uh, and that uh, keeps the uh, uh, the light from bleeding through the plastic and so like when the models all done uh, if you're looking at it in a, in a lowly, you know, dimly lit room, you don't want to see the light leaking through different areas of the model. It should only be lit like where the where you want it to be lit, like the windows, the blinking lights, things like that. So it's important. And we do that with black first, maybe one or two coats, and then we come back and we put our, a coat of flat white over the top of that. Now what the white does, like he was explaining here, it makes all the light bounce around in here, so you don't have to use as much uh, lighting. You can see we've got. Uh, just these small little strips here of uh, LED lighting which will light almost this entire saucer we're back you know a few years ago before we started uh, figuring all this stuff out people were having to put you know 30 or 40 LEDs inside here to get this thing lit properly and um, so you know it's it's uh, just things that we've learned over time you know it, lighting of these models has only gotten you know popular kind of in the last couple of years and uh, where you know a lot of people are starting to do it so just these little things you can do here and there but he's uh, he's picking up little things where he's um, starting to work with the airbrush a little bit, and uh, uh, like I said, he's you know making really really good progress. Uh, you know, learning how to solder these little uh, uh, LED strips here is is uh, is hard enough in itself. You know, there's a lot of people out there who who uh, comment comment on that quite often that it's difficult. But you know, I showed him the basic way I do it here, and he's able to now uh, you know bring out our little kind of helping hands here and lay down the strip on there and make nice little small little beads of solder and then uh, connect his wire on there you know without you know getting too shaky or putting too much solder on it so he's really doing a great job of that he's learning how to you know clean all the wiring up and go back and check uh, to make sure all of his connections and 
that's an important thing that he was talking about as well is that uh, the method that I taught him here was like every time you make a, a, a connection somewhere you want to you know just my particular method is that you want to solder that that at that point in time um, because you know you make uh, 20 connections around here you could you could miss one of them and if you know maybe it's making a connection now because the wires are twisted together but you know over time if it's not soldered you know the model shakes a little bit you could lose the connection or something and out go the lights you know or out goes whatever was hooked up to that so it's just a kind of a good uh, uh, you know rule of thumb to go around and, and, and do that that way you make sure you don't forget anything now uh, you want to grab uh, the the top saucer that one that's over on the little stool yeah. over there and we can show them what we did there uh, so he's like I said he's making really good progress you can see on this one we've got this one set up for our uh, uh, we've got our phaser and photon torpedo effects now basically all you're doing here is you've got the center LED in white which uh, lights the you know the dome part on the model but then we've added two five millimeter blue LEDs and they're mounted at a about a 45 degree angle to that you know on the back side kind of pointed at an angle kind of tilted just a little bit and those will activate whenever we hit the sounds on our soundboard they're wired up to a different circuit coming off of the speaker output on our soundboard so those are only going to come on whenever we hit the uh, phasers of the photons our other white one here is on all the time whenever the lights are on so we got to you know I showed them how to set that up and um, but then we combine that with the uh, upper saucer here and you can see we've got uh, some strip lighting that needs to go here that uh, faces downward to light these little window groupings here that are on the bottom now to get the main part of the window groupings here on the bottom lit and also on the uh, uh, BC deck up here and the bridge what we do is we put a small piece of uh, kind of square shaped styrene sheet right here and you can see that there's these little pads that are uh, included in the model and we mount it you know we basically make it to that size right there where it lines up with these you know and it overlays it now we'll take um, two strips about this long of LED tape in our warm white and we'll lay those kind of narrow together just like maybe this far apart and we'll put those on the back side and that will light up the entire BC deck here and light up all the uh, detail inside of the bridge where the way they want you to do is they want you to mount these LEDs like really close up inside here well I don't like doing that because they're too close and they wash out all the detail inside the bridge they're too bright so having it just sitting down like that uh, with a little bit of space it lights up our BC deck windows nice and even and it gives just the right kind of lighting and lights up the bridge for us really nice well so then we have that laying there up you know those on the back side facing upward well on the bottom side we mount uh, two more across like this and two more across like that and that lights the entire bottom section here uh, of all of our windows so you got you kind of get a two for one there and then you also get it you know kind of that that piece of styrene kind of seals everything off and keeps everything separate and looks nice and clean when it's done so it's a you know it's a nifty little trick for lighting up the uh, top and bottom half of the saucer and uh, we leave enough extra wire on that so we can uh, when we bring the two together you know you just leave a little bit extra wire and we connect our top and bottom navigation lights into the same harness and just kind of flop it over and put it down you know and, and just before we close it up that little extra slack we have in the wire will will reach in there with our, with our glue and glue that down so it's not just flopping around in there loose and then close it up and uh, you can see I just finished up um, another one here that we're working on and this one is basically built as an entire you know kind of sub assembly so where this entire thing is done now it's ready to go it's all painted all cleaned up uh, everything's done and all the lighting is finished everything is ready to go and this will just drop down onto the uh, we'll drop these wires down into the the secondary hull and then out through the deflector dish housing like I talked about and connect all that up and uh, the secondary hull will be built you know as a solid assembly with the uh, pylons and everything on there and then we just have to finish off by putting the engines on when we're done so building this as kind of a modular uh, this is something that I just kind of recently in the last couple builds started doing because I just found that it was easier to uh, go around and uh, do all the uh, sanding and everything on the um, on the seams uh, this 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 area right here where the uh, saucers go together it's kind of difficult to get that seam looking good and uh, it's much easier to handle this way doing it like that and we added the little we did the little rustering detail on this one like you see on the original 11 footer 
just something kind of different. We're always, you know, every one of these we build is just a little bit different. We try to add something or, you know, but it's ready to go. So we'll be doing the same thing on the, uh, on the next one. And uh, this one has been done, as we pointed out, and it's all been smoothed out. The only thing we have is the uh, concentric rings uh, left here in the center. But all the grid lines and everything have all been filled in on this one. We're going to be doing the Aztec paneling on this, which we're going to show you some of that when we get to that. So, uh, but uh, JD's been doing a fantastic job. Like I said, he's helping me out a lot with, uh, you know, all this little stuff that you do here is really tedious work and it takes a lot of time. And so him coming in and helping me with that is... Uh, uh, a good way for him to start learning and everything just you know the basics uh, and those are the little details that make for a nice model when it's done if you take your time and clean all those parts up and uh, uh, it just helps the whole thing go go along a lot faster and I know he's uh, yeah, he's really enjoying it he's I think he's gonna start building models for himself before too long I think he's really enjoying it yeah. so uh, and I just want to say one thing boy to, to our viewers uh, I know a lot of you probably think that you know it's impossible to you know build one of these uh, I've never ever worked with models before i mean this is my first time and you know if i can learn it you guys can learn it just uh, watch boyd's videos you know there's lots of tips and tricks in there that you can learn and and, and you know it's not as hard as what you think just uh, if, you, if you want to try it go ahead and just do it go for it yeah and i think it's going to be uh, interesting for you guys to uh, uh follow along and see uh the progress that jd makes and he, he makes a really good point there uh just by watching videos, you know, not necessarily just my videos, but all the different people out there that are doing uh, these really helpful videos. You know, we talk about that all the time here on the show. There's uh, hangouts you can go to. There's forums you can join, uh, you know, and most people out there are really helpful and they'll answer your questions. You know, uh, if you run into a little issue, just, you know, kind of stop and, and ask around and see what kind of help you can get. And there's uh, most of the time there's somebody more than willing to help that's, that's already built the particular model you're working on. They can give you advice about how to do it or like what you need to do it as far as supplies or uh, products that work good that you know there's all kinds of products that are out there but some work better than others and some uh, you know there's a lot of inexpensive ways you can uh, alternative things that you can use that are just kind of household products that work just as good as some of the more expensive you know quote unquote hobby based products to save you some money and things like that so um, but uh, you know it's it, uh, seeing how uh, JD's going to pr progress along here and over the next few months you're going to see him uh, uh, over you know all by himself be able to build one of these um, beautiful uh, starship models and everything so I hope you guys are enjoying that okay everybody we're going to take a uh, break and then we're going to come back one more time here and uh, uh, talk about a little bit of modeling news and some other things and then we'll wrap that up after that with our uh, shout outs and our Q&A for tonight be right back everybody Okay, guys, we're back with you again, and uh, just wanted to, uh, one last thing I forgot to show you guys there, and I meant, 
meant to do it was uh, we're going to turn on the lights on our little shuttle bay here for you and just show you the uh, uh, the lighting on that. I meant to do that in that segment there, but I forgot about it. I'll just show you that on camera here real quick. Hit it. Okay, so you can see basically up there we've got our window lighting going on inside on the back wall like I talked about on the sides there uh, with our warm white SMDs and then I actually uh, opened up the uh, door of the shuttle itself and we have a uh, 0805 regular white SMD mounted inside the shuttle so that it gives the appearance of the cabin being lit and it also lights up the uh, the forward windows there of the shuttle we've got a couple crew figures in there hanging around like they're loading something into the shuttle the client uh, wanted that on this one and then you can see we've got our uh, SMDs there on the top that are lighting our uh, our upper you know kind of skylight paneling if you want to call it that and like I said here it looks a little bit sourcey but once this is in, down inside if I can maybe show you that and it's sitting up tight against the uh, um, you know the ceiling of the uh, the hull itself that lighting will look all nice and even up there in the top so uh, that that just works really good and um, we uh, also to get it to fit easier in there one thing I forgot to mention too is this uh, part has these little ears that are molded onto it for they're meant to uh, mount five millimeter uh, LEDs onto it, and uh, it, to get it to fit better in there, I just I just took my Dremel tool and shaved all those off. And then everywhere where the uh, shuttle bay is put together here, you've got a seam on the bottom uh, where the two walls go to the floor, and then up here on the top, uh, I just laid a bead of glue down on that and let it dry, and then I uh, you know painted over the top of it with some black, and that stops all the cracks you know and the light leaks coming through from around the edges and stuff so just a little thing i forgot to say there but anyway i hope that helps you out um again that's kind of one of the more tricky parts uh to get lit on that model is uh you know if you look at it right out of the box you'll see that it's a really really tight fit in there they, they needed to make that shuttle just a tiny little bit smaller uh it's actually undersized from what it really should be you know the shuttle bay on the uh, that we saw on the tv show was was actually quite a bit bigger than that but they just kind of did the best they could uh, so we thought we'd uh, show you that tonight for some of you who have not built it before. But uh, speaking of uh, the TOS-1350, uh, it was announced by uh, Round 2 Models about a week or so ago, or maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I think they were going to talk about it at Wonderfest this year. Is that they are releasing a um, special 50th anniversary version of the uh, Classic Enterprise and special 50th anniversary packaging. And uh, I'm not sure, but uh, they're also going to offer a supplemental part now the upper and lower saucers will be available without the grid lines molded on and uh, that's something that was a hot debate uh, when the kit first came out you know half the people that were waiting to get the kits wanted no grid lines and the other half wanted the grid lines now the grid lines were actually there on the original uh, studio model but they were done with a pencil they weren't recessed uh, uh, you know actual trenches into the top surface so uh, in order to simulate that they decided to go with the uh, you know sort of little trenches in there They're not they're not really that hard to fill in like you know You can like I talked about you can put a little bit of putty in those and sand them down and clean it up But they're gonna offer now a replacement part which is a smooth upper and lower saucer for the uh, 1350 it's supposed to be out uh, I think they said between midsummer to fall and I think eventually the kits gonna be uh uh, package that way where I don't I think they're going to eliminate the grid work on the saucer altogether now so if you want to uh, uh, add the grid line onto it after that you know the, the the kind of the way they did it on the studio model you're gonna have to make a template of some kind and you know carefully use an, uh, uh, a mechanical pencil you know mechanical artist drawing pencil like Matt Jeffries originally did and go ahead and put that on there now I've talked to a couple of people out there about um, uh, maybe creating a template for doing that and so there's a couple people working on it so maybe, maybe you'll see uh, uh, you know something like that available aftermarket in the future to make uh, use as a guide you know to be able to do that if you want to add that detail on the model so you can maybe look forward to that so a little bit of modeling news uh, the other thing that I wanted to kind of talk to everybody about is that I, I think it's kind of interesting that um, to me the uh, the modeling manufacturers if you want to call it that they're kind of um, you know lighting these model kits has been obviously gaining gaining popularity uh it's it's like any uh, almost any sci-fi particular kits that are available now uh almost everybody wants to light these now that the technology's gotten much more uh user friendly and more affordable and things like that and it seems to me that the um 
the kit manufacturers are, are, are being a little bit slow to respond to that. I mean, I know some of the kit uh, people out there are uh, starting to you know provide their own aftermarket lighting kits. For example, we have uh, Polar Lights has the lighting kit for the 350, and they have uh, a lighting kit. Uh, Mobius has some lighting kits that they offer for some of their stuff, like the Jupiter 2. And they used to have a kit for the big uh, Seaview, but I'm not sure if that's available anymore or not. But, you know, you kind of see a little bit of that trickling in. But uh, the kits themselves, I would like to see it uh, if they would actually be designed to be lit. In other words, when they make the molds and everything, make the windows and everything already cut out so that, uh, you know, that discourages a lot of people that don't know how to do that. You know, doing all that minuscule little drilling and filing and cutting. It'd be great if they would start releasing more kits uh, similar to the, you know, the TOS 350 and the big 1350 scale refit. And, uh, for instance, if they would uh, release a new Reliant, uh, like if they re-release re the uh, Repop version in 1537 scale, if they'd bring that kit out with the windows already punched out, or, the, uh, for example, the original um, 1650 scale Classic Enterprise, you know, if they'd update that kit a little bit, you know, make it where the windows were already punched out, maybe uh, uh, some of the other kits that they're going to do, you know, sci-fi kits, kind of keep that in mind. It just seems to me that um, they're kind of a little bit slow to respond to the uh, overwhelming wave of people out there now. You can see it everywhere where everybody's interested in doing lighting on these models now, like I said, because it's, uh, you know, it's so much easier to do and within everybody's reach technically and everything like that. And, and, and the cost of the materials to, you know, these LEDs and everything don't cost that much anymore. And everybody's putting out, you know, videos on how to do it and everything. So, uh, you know, maybe if a bunch of us started writing into some of the model companies like Round 2 and Mobius and some of these other ones, you know, telling, letting them know that we're, uh, that we're interested in, in lighting our models and uh, maybe they would, uh, you know, respond to that a little bit more. And it, it could be that that's what they're eventually planning, but uh, it just seems like uh, even some of the new kits that come out, uh, you have to go back and, you know, uh, do your own window drilling or do buy aftermarket templates, you know, so you can, you know, photo etch stuff so you can lay it on there and, and drill out the windows, you know, clean and accurate because not everybody's uh, skills are up there where they can feel comfortable doing that, you know, and if you if you screw it up, then you're, you know, if you don't know how to repair it, you're basically, you've ruined the kit, you know, I mean, there's ways you can fix it, but not everybody's aware of that, so, uh, you know, maybe if we all start kind of asking the model companies to kind of consider that, uh, it might be something that we could make happen in the near future or not too far future, so just something to think about in the modeling world out there. So, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, like I said, we're, uh, We'll be getting back to um, getting on some of our other subjects. You know, we did a little bit of work on the electric tonight. We got some other kits that we're going to be showing you that we're working on. But uh, this last couple of weeks and maybe another week or two, we're just really busy getting caught up on the commission bills. We want to get to a certain point. We're getting, we're doing really good yeah. thanks to uh, JD helping me out with all those small little details, and uh, we're we're knocking these things out. So, uh, you know, kind of a kind of a little bit about what we're doing on that right now. But I just wanted to. Uh, we both wanted to share with you guys um, how he's uh, working his way into this thing and everything. And um, uh, like I said, I couldn't be happier with his progress. So uh, just like uh, when Jeremy was here before, I know you guys uh, enjoyed following along with how he was learning and everything. So this is the same thing with uh, JD, but he's making just fantastic progress. And he really has a knack for this stuff. So I think he's going to be really good at it. And that's that's great. And I think he actually, you know, you have to have a passion for it too. You have to like working on models and I, I really think he's enjoying himself so I look forward to more too so you Thank betcha you. okay guys we're going to head over and do our um our shout outs and our q a for tonight so if you guys have any uh questions you want to uh ask uh go ahead and fire those up uh we have tonight with us first we have uh, chuck brooks we have uh cal sweet that's 2000 spqr jim clark james schulenberg Alpha Trion 92, George Volkowski, Brian Knowles, Gadgetron 3000, Randy Gagliano, Perrin Greenway, uh, James Schulenberg, Mark Buchholz, Omar, uh, B. Tilly, Federation Shipyard, Mike Kovach is here tonight. Mike, you did a great job on your uh, your jet. I think you called it the Dreamliner, the uh, Led Zeppelin tribute build. That was a beautiful model. Turned out nice. Omar. Alpha Trion 92. Uh, 
Space Pirates Hobbies. Nice to see you here tonight, Chris. Modeler X. Chris Farrell is here tonight. Grayson Peoples. Nice to see you, Grayson. Chuck Brooks. Chuck Brooks, our good friend Chuck's here. Uh, red shirt forever. <laughs> He's, uh, I had to explain to uh, JD about what the inside joke is about the red shirts. Yeah, you won't be seeing that again. <laughs> Let's see. Right, Jamie got? Carrasco is here tonight. Just making sure I don't miss anybody just trying to scroll all the way through here guys Chris Farrell Chris Farrell Troy Leona Timber Company nice to see you At Federation Shipyard. Yep, he's a regular on our show. Nice to see him tonight. I think, uh, let's see, getting towards the bottom here. Uh, Adam Corville's here tonight. Try Skilly. Nice to see you, Adam. Christopher Baxley. Uh, Michelle Bennett's here tonight. Nice to see you. Derek Sabora. Dale Anderson. Jim Clark. And I think we got down to the bottom, so we'll kind of roll back through here and see if we've uh, got any questions. If you guys have any uh, questions for us, uh, fire those up. Perrin Greenway's here. I'm not sure if I said him already. Um, J-D. J-A-Y-D-E-E. -E. Spelled a little different than <laughs> you, but yep, yeah, welcome J-D. Uh, James Frost, E Biker 56, Model G, Gabriel Soro, Dan Harris, Dan Harris, Okay, I'm not really seeing too many questions pop up yet, but we'll just give it a few seconds here. Modeler X is asking if I'm still using the uh, Nason line for your gloss, uh, flat and satin clear. Well, I'm using the Nason for the gloss, for the high gloss, but for the uh, satin, I'll use you know stuff out of cans or uh, I'm actually now trying out some Duplicolor uh, satin uh, clear that comes in a uh, 32 ounce can that you can uh, load in your uh, airbrush or your uh, spraying gun and I'm really happy with it so far uh, picked it up online for about $21 for a 32 ounce can of it it dries it, it's it's a satin it's not totally dull but it's not glossy either it's right in between so it, it makes a nice finish on these Star Trek models uh, it seems to uh, lay down really nice and dries pretty fast and everything so I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit of that when we get ready to uh, spray this next enterprise when we get all of our decals and everything put on when we seal it all up i'll talk about that a little bit 
you know, for $21, it's a, it's a good price because uh, you could, uh, that, that will make like equivalent to several, several cans in the spray can. So uh, it's a little bit more economical to buy it in a can ready to spray like that. It comes completely ready to spray. You don't have to dilute it or reduce it or anything. You just load it straight into the gun and spray away, whether you want to use your detail gun or your airbrush. Uh, Omar is asking, what kind of coating did you put on the on the uh, Super Fortress to keep the chrome? Uh, I didn't do any coating on it at all, uh, Omar. That's just uh, regular um, the Duplicolor right out of the can. Uh, I didn't I didn't seal the decals or anything on that one. Uh, just uh, you know, being being that it's going to sit inside my air conditioned room and it's not going to get a lot of uh, handling or anything like that I didn't worry about sealing up the decals these new decals seem to be sticking a lot better and holding up over time too um, but any kind of a if you put any kind of a finished sealer on that it's gonna dull it down it's not gonna look uh, as realistic chrome as it does unfortunately I even I experimented trying using some future I experimented using some high gloss you know regular clear coat and no matter what I put on it it, it would lose that uh, that mirror you know really bright chrome it would it would dull it down to where it more look like sort of a dull aluminum instead so uh, I didn't put any kind of sealer on that at all I'm gonna do the same thing on this uh, I'm gonna paint this little Lockheed Electra that we're doing as that same uh, you know bright polished aluminum look with that duplicolor chrome so I won't be putting any kind of sealer on that either uh, but the the thing about that paint is is that it if you've been using it a little bit you probably already know it dries really slow so you gotta put thin coats on if you if you just put one you know thick coat on there it'll take forever for it to dry so what i did is i learned that i just laid down one little kind of base coat let it sit for a couple hours and then hit it again with a mid coat and then maybe a third coat if i you know really want to put that nice really smooth you know shiny uh final coat on there and uh now that we're getting some sunlight here in san antonio and everything finally uh, I've got a platform just outside of my shop. I can sit it out there for about an hour or two in direct sunlight and it will dry really fast. But if it's sitting inside of a room, especially if there's a little bit of humidity and things like that, it, it is really slow to dry. It'll fool you too because, I mean, you you kind of touch it and it feels dry, but if you happen to hold on to it for very long or, you know, you're handling it when you're putting decals on or something like that, you, it'll leave a thumbprint or something on there. Um, so it's just really slow drying, but that's the best 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 uh, best way I could explain that um, but it's great stuff I, I haven't found besides like all clad uh, it's the best it's the closest thing I've seen to uh, getting that that chrome uh, look that you can get with all clads uh, right out of a spray can you know where you don't have to with the all clad you have to uh, paint like gloss black underneath of it and then gloss it and then put your all clad over the top of it you know so a bunch more steps and the all clads a lot more expensive I mean little bitty uh, whatever bottle those come in two ounce or one ounce bottle uh, a whole can like a 12 ounce can of that dupa color chrome only costs like over here it only costs like seven dollars so it's uh, it's a lot better deal and Omar is saying that he's seeing that it's rubbing off that's that's strange Omar I'm not uh, I didn't have that problem at all. I've sprayed it a couple models with it, and uh, I haven't had any issues at all with it coming out. I wonder if you might have got a bad can or something. Yeah, some, some of the people are pointing out here... Uh, I basically tried every kind of known clear that there is over top of that, and no matter what I put on it, it uh, it's got something to do with the the makeup of the uh, the paint, the reflectivity of it. Uh, it it dulls it down. It doesn't look the same. It'll you know it'll look more like just regular aluminum or kind of flat aluminum. It won't look like um, it has that really reflective mirror like you know look to it. 
Yeah, That's Omar says it could be humidity. It about might that, be that, Omar. About that LED strip from last week. Chuck is asking about that. Yeah, it just was a bad strip of LED tape, I guess, Chuck. It was working when I put it in there, and it just quit working. Some, some. I've had that happen once or twice. It's kind of weird because the, uh, you know, the whole strip didn't go out, but just a couple little LEDs here and there went out. That's why um, it's good to let them burn in for a little while, you know. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, that had only been running for maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, the total amount of time, and it burned out. I usually let these burn in for like 12 hours overnight before I go ahead and um, seal everything up and close it all up. If, if something's going to go wrong, it usually goes wrong in that first couple hours or hour or two. Oh, it looks like Jamie Carrasco's in San Antonio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, Jamie. It's really hot and it's getting really humid. Uh, uh, we had the AC up, cranking up full bore in here, and you can still feel it a little bit. It's gonna get hotter. Yep, we got about three months of this to look forward mm -hmm. to. Yeah, some people are are, are talking about that Dupacolor Chrome. They let it sit for a couple of weeks, but. Uh, when I painted the B29, I wanted to put it outside. Uh, and like I mentioned when I was doing the video on that, we had like three weeks of constant rain and I never got a chance to put it out in the sun. But I have got a chance to experiment with that now. And uh, if I paint it and put it out in the direct sunlight, um, it's only a couple of hours. And I mean, it is it is dry. I mean, like mm -hmm. super, super dry. It like bakes it on there. Omar, I've got a big old um, wall-mounted AC unit that's shoot i don't know it's probably like sixty thousand btu <laughs> it's at least sixty thousand it's either fifty five or sixty thousand btu it's a monster and it, it even has a hard time keeping up this garage has got drywall but it's not insulated so uh but it's uh it's also got a built-in heat pump so it's a heater in the winter time which is really nice but i can i can keep you know most of the time pretty reasonable for painting inside here Ah, Chuck says that the uh, there's some more modeling news there, everybody. The, it sounds like Round 2 has said that they're going to bring back the uh, Enterprise D in clear, so that's nice. I also heard that uh, the Reliant uh, will be back out again in one five three seven scale. That's nice because a lot of people have been wanting that kit since they took it down. But hopefully they'll be making some kits uh, that uh, are designed to be lit, you know, where we don't have to do all that window work. That would... That discourages a lot of people from wanting to do that. They don't want to cut all the windows out, or um, they don't want to, um, uh, you know, they don't have the tools for it, or they just don't feel confident in doing it. And, you know, uh, it's not easy to do. It's really tedious and really, really uh, consuming, time consuming. Gabriel's sorrow. What's he saying there? How do you keep the dust off your models in the model room? Uh, just regular dusting, the old-fashioned way. I got like a little um, fine uh, brush, kind of a wide painter's brush that's the real fine one, and I just lightly go over it, or I got a little feather duster. Uh, the feather duster you can't use on the models that have like a little, you know, a lot of little fine little things sticking up because you don't want to have it grab a hold, snag it, and break the piece off. But about once every month I have to go in there and dust them. It's a lot to keep up with. I feel like a, uh, I guess that's what museum curators do. Right. A lot, a lot of dusting. Yeah. That's a good question. How do you tone down the ends of fiber optics that are a bit bright? From James Schulenberg. Um. Uh, James, the the way I do it is I'll reduce the source of light itself, like by like making the. Um, you know, if it's being lit with an LED or whatever, making that a little bit dimmer itself. Using, you know, <laughs> a, a, a higher valued resistor or something like that. Hey, Omar, Omar wants to know if you wear a French maid outfit when cleaning the models. <laughs> <laughs> no, not into that, Omar. <laughs> not into that. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. Oh, man. <laughs> Omar's out of control. <laughs> They're asking, what type of hobbies do you have, J.D.? Oh, uh, actually, I collect sports.
sports McFarlane's. McFarlane, yeah. oh, the McFarlane figures? Basketball, those are football. nice. Yeah, uh, I know you mentioned you had a yeah, whole yeah, huge collection yeah. of those. But other than that, that's about it. Uh, pretty much just work full time, and on my off days, I'm over here working with Boyd. Work, work, Give me work, time, work, guys. Work. I'm working on him. Before you know it, he'll be wanting to build models, and he'll have his own we'll collection of models, and hobby. his <laughs> own favorite subjects. I'm working on him. Yeah, I, I, Chris Farrell is saying there. Like for example, the the one one thousand scale, uh, uh, classic Enterprise and the uh, refit. Those are really popular models. You know why can't they make those models with the windows already punched out? You know that'd be great. I mean, uh, you got. It's not like it can't be done. You know, we got this Bondi uh, back here that comes that way all ready to be lit, and it's about a one one thousand scale. It's about the exact same size as the uh, uh, as the polar lights, so it can be done. And uh, we just need to let the companies know that that's what we want. <clears throat> I like that would be cool. Lost in space figures from McFarland's. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt if they would one day. You never know. They've got everything it's else. It's all about getting the licensing. Yeah. yeah. anything sometimes they, like I said they roll by so darn fast uh, Gadgetron is saying that the, the the Enterprise D and clear the repop will be made of ABS instead of styrene well that's great because I think I actually think that that's um, what killed the Enterprise D? I think they were having a lot of warranty issues. You know, that uh, styrene that they were using was cracking, or or they were coming out warped. I had a couple kits that the saucers were warped, and uh, they do crack really easy. Now I have the uh, clear uh, D uh, Deep Space Nine kit that they put out, and that's molded in ABS, and that's much better. It's more flexible. Uh, it, it'll it'll go together a lot easier, and uh, it, it'll last over time a lot easier too. So that's probably the reason that they pulled it off the market and then they're bringing it back. He's saying that it's not going to come with the uh, Aztec sheet. You'll have to buy that separate. I hope they'll have it available, but it doesn't surprise me. Uh, they can make more money by selling that separately. Yeah, uh... JD says the Ravel 1600 scale. There's an example right there. You know, that, that comes with all the windows punched out. It's basically right about the same size as the original AMT 1650. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I would love to see them. I would love to see AMT somehow be able to keep the original mold of the classic Enterprise, which is having its 50th anniversary this year. That kit's been on the market for 50 years. I saw some, something on the internet where they said that's the most sold model kit in the entire world. They estimate there's millions of that model kit that have been produced. So I'd like to see that kept in its original form because it's just an original classic. But I would like to see AMT come out with a, uh, a new kit. Basically take the 350 scale and shrink it down to like 1600 or 1650. And, uh, uh, you know, being really accurate but also having it made to be lit. That's that. To me, that's like the ideal scale for a model uh, for most people. You know, not everybody can handle the space for a big three or four foot long model. And uh, models that are around 18, 20 inches long, like you get in the, uh, you know, 1650, 1537 scale, in my opinion, those are just about the, the perfect size because uh, they're big enough where you can put some nice detail into it. And they're not too big where they're going to just wipe out your whole desk, you know, for people who have limited uh, room to display their stuff. So, um, you know, and we'll see. Uh, you know, like I said, if, if enough of us out there let them know that we're interested in stuff like that, you know, they, they hopefully they'll, uh, they'll respond. Big Stats is asking about the uh, Battlestar. I haven't done much to the Battlestar lately. Uh... Big stats, but uh, you guys aren't going to miss anything on that. Um, we'll be back to working on that. But the main uh, focus right now was getting caught up on all these uh, uh, 350 toss enterprises that we had here in the shop, and uh, 
probably another couple of weeks we'll be clear of those and we'll be you know able to keep up as we go just me by myself and uh, that was one of the reasons why I decided to go and do this full time is because uh, uh, I just wasn't able to keep up with it um, so but with JD here now and me being able to concentrate on it all day uh, it's going to make, make a big difference and so you guys are going to get see you know catching up on all that stuff um, oh yeah one thing I wanted to mention too is uh, thanks to our good friend Tag Gray who created our new logo for the uh, show uh, Tag has got something worked out so we're going to be able to offer t-shirts to you guys I know that keeps coming up uh, Tag's got some t-shirt uh, t-shirt package that he's putting together helping me out with that uh, so if, if you guys are out there are interested in getting shirts and the way it's going to work is kind of what stopped me from being able to do it uh, initially is that I didn't want to I didn't I didn't want to get myself into a situation with with trying to keep up with you know uh, sending them all out or keeping them in stock you know kind of managing the whole thing because my priority is building models and um, but tag found a company that actually you guys will be able to buy them and order directly from them they'll ship them directly to you and they'll have all the sizes available which if I was to do it I was only gonna be able to afford that stock you know like maybe one or two sizes and um, so uh, very shortly here in, a, in another maybe even by next week's episode we'll be able to uh, uh, tell you guys more about that and get you uh, the link uh, to where you'll be able to buy them now they're gonna be really nice we picked out some nice quality shirts and they're gonna have the model shop logo like basically right here on the on the pocket and then the big model shop logo on the back so um, uh, hopefully you guys um, uh, will be able to you know uh, get those and um, uh, I believe they're gonna be offering them in different colors now the logo that we have goes looks best on the black and it looks best on the uh, they've got kind of a dark gray uh, which which tag was showing me some samples and uh, they look good you know but if, I suppose if you want it, you can get them in any color you want but uh, I think those are gonna look uh, be best with the uh, with the with that particular logo so um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about that for quite a while and uh, um, we might do some coffee mugs later or uh, maybe hats if people hats, want yeah. them. Um, we'll, we'll just see how the shirts go at first and then we'll go from there. So I appreciate you guys waiting on that. And Tag is, is helping me out a lot. He's actually working on the website now. I got totally stuck on that. Uh, my son was helping me do that and he works full time and he was doing it for free and he, he, he wasn't had a lot of time to spend on it. So Tag is uh, uh, working on that for me now. So that's going to get going finally and, and uh, be very soon here. So... Uh, a lot of cool things moving forward finally Chris Farrell says he wants to welcome you to the uh, hobby uh, and oh, we missed the last episode thank you Chris Farrell I appreciate that yeah he's uh, you guys uh, JD is really enjoying himself and uh, he's uh, he, he just he's, he's really good at it I'm just amazed at how good he is at this stuff with having none, never done it before he's got good hands and he uh, He's good at working on you know small little parts, which is what you got to be able to do to work on model kits, obviously. So he's 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 going to be really good at it. Thanks. We'll get him into painting and all kinds of neat stuff here going forward. Yeah. Well, let me check the time here, folks. Let me see how far we are in. We're about an hour and 40 minutes, so I think we're getting close to calling this a wrap, everybody. Um, uh, coined a new term, just JD'd it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, we'll look forward to being with you guys back again next week. We're having a lot of fun. Like I said, uh, sorry that it's been mainly uh, Toss Enterprise, but I figure um, a lot of you guys out there keep writing and asking questions about it, so we'll show you some of this stuff. Again, you know, it's stuff that we don't we don't want to repeat, but some of this stuff I haven't shown before. And um, we're going to put all this information together with photographs and, uh, you know, a uh, 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 probably in a PDF type format, like an ebook type format that we're going to have produce a building guide on the 350 toss and a building guide on the 350 refit. And uh, once the website's up and running and everything, we'll be uh, we'll have those over there available, and uh, you know, a bunch of other little things. So. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Uh, well, once we get caught up here a little bit, I'm thinking this week or the next we'll be back to uh, 
doing our regular out of the box kit reviews and and showing you other little side projects that we're building here we got a little bit in on the electric tonight but we'll have more on that we got to finish the man in space kit got to get some new kits into the shop here for uh kit reviews and things like that so um uh but uh we just had to crank crank away on these uh commission builds for for right now Okay, everybody, it looks like everybody's ready to wind it down. We'll, uh, we'll say thanks again for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to give us a like button. That helps spread the word. Hit that like button if you guys get a chance. We really appreciate that. But the more people we can get involved in the show, uh, joining, in, joining in on our chats and everything else, that uh, makes it better for everybody. So uh, we'll be back next week at our regular time, and we'll have some new material for you and show you where we're catching up on everything and uh, show you how JD's coming along. So... You guys take care. Like we say, build something this week. Have fun. We'll see you next time, everybody. Good night good and happy week. modeling, everyone.